Friends, it is Saturday, December 2, 2023. Hope you've got some tea or coffee. We're going to look at two more verses today. From Matthew uh, chapter 1, the 17 verses of Jesus' genealogy. One of the things that's pointed out in this genealogy, just before I read these verses, is this number 14. There are 14 generations uh, from Abraham to David, King David, uh, from David to the deportation, from the deportation to Jesus. So it's three groups of 14. Why is 14 important? Well, 14 is Matthew's way of hinting to us that Jesus is, is, the, is, the, is the key point of the genealogy, that everything's leading towards him. Because uh, the Hebrews did not have numbers. They used their, each, each letter had a numeric value among, among their consonants. And so, for instance, David's name has three consonants in Hebrew, and each of those, it's a, it, two consonants really, but one twice. And the numeric value is four, six, and four, which is 14. And so 14 is the numeric value of David's name. Uh, as I mentioned before, the story told in the genealogy is one of uh, this humble beginning, one family, Abraham, nation begins to grow. It culminates most spectacularly in King David, who expands the territory to its, its greatest lengths. And so he's the kind of the great king of Israel. And uh, then it descends down to the, um, to the deportation, the unfaithfulness of Israel and the deportation in which the promise to Abraham that, 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 that he would create a nation that would be a blessing to the world and the promise to David his king would last forever seem to be over because they've lost the, the capital and, and the, the kingdom and it's been overrun and the leaders have been deported and they're not connected to their temple and their, their cultic practices uh, and it all seems to be ended. And then the prophets during this period of the exile between 587 and 532 or so begin to dream of a, a bigger thing that God's going to do where he's not going to restore the fortunes of Israel, but he is also going to bring a, a new level of peace and righteousness to the world as a whole. He initiate a new kind of kingdom. And the figure that that centers on is someone who will be a son of David. He'll be in David's line. And so the 14 is a reminder that God is at work bringing forth a Messiah who will fulfill the promises uh, to, to the patriarchs and to David and the hopes of the prophets that begin in the exile. And so uh, th this son of David idea is very key. And so here I want to read verses 6 and 12. You'll see what I mean in Matthew's genealogy. Matthew 1, 6. Jesse was the father of King David and David was the father of Solomon by the wife of Uriah. There's that way of referring to Bathsheba without mentioning her. And after the deportation to Babylon... Jeconiah was the father of Salathiel, and Salathiel the father of Zerubbabel. Uh, so what connects these verses? The deportation on the one hand and uh, the, 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 the kingship of David that's mentioned. Um, the theological crisis that the deportation brought on was really one of confidence that the covenant was still in operation and that the promises of God would be, would, would be fulfilled. Um, and then in the exile, they met a God who was active even in Babylon beyond their borders and, and Jerusalem and beyond their other practices. Uh, this ex the exilic prophets began to celebrate a God who filled the universe with his glory and created everything that was seen and unseen. And as I mentioned, they began to dream of a David-like Messiah who would restore uh, Israel's fortunes. He was a branch from the stump of Jesse, a root from the stump of Jesse. Of course, in Jesus, Israel got far, far more. They got an experience of a king who was going to extend the boundaries again out to the exploited and the vulnerable, to the non-Jews. He was going to bring a kingdom that brought a life that was itself uh, stronger than death. Uh, it's amazing that God has a human gene genealogy, but it's even more amazing that through that Jesus in that human genealogy, he gives us the opportunity of a divine genealogy because through his love, we are now brought into his family. We're adopted. God works by adoption and we're adopted just like Joseph adopted Jesus. Isn't it fascinating? Jesus was not biologically Joseph's son. He was adopted just as Joseph adopted Jesus. So we are also adopted, but we're adopted into this line. It includes 
the Jewish relatives of our Lord, all those heroes, uh, with all their flaws, uh, going back through the generations, more than 42 generations. Matthew was selective in the names that he used. And um, also, uh, we are related because anyone who embraces God's love in Christ is adopted to his family. We're now related to all these other families around the earth of people that are that have become part of God's family. We have the most amazing genealogy imaginable. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for exceeding our expectations and identifying with the struggling and the beleaguered and with uniting the world in your great genealogy. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.